Yo, it's Guido coming at you with another review. Another review. A little late to the party on this one. This is the Chrysler K, which recently infested the game because it was a rental, a free rental, and 20 battles. Basically, everybody got it. And last weekend, it was absolutely chock full of Chrysler K cars. They were everywhere. And if you recall, I guess it's been over a year now, maybe more actually. I lose track of time because I'm getting older, I suppose. But there was a huge blow up about this tank when it came out based on power creep and gold spam. But mostly gold spam and the design of premiums or tanks with no weak spots. You'll, if you remember, Sir Foch came out and absolutely eviscerated Wargaming about this tank because it had no frontal weak spots. It has extremely strong frontal armor. Still does. No weak spots have appeared. However, the side is quite weak. It, it was interesting because it was a little bit misunderstood. His, I suppose you would call it a rant, but his concerns with it in that most people took that to mean or interpreted it to mean that it was completely overpowered. Well, to some extent, when it is facing you, it is, at tier 8, a bit overpowered. However, once you get around its side, it's not so much. But it's got some other things going for it, which is mobility, and that absolutely helps it. The other piece of what he was complaining about, specifically with this tank, is that the penetration of the gun is so low that it almost requires completely gold spam for it to be effective at tier 8 and above. If you remember, that was back in the days of 357, so that was even more important. Still is, but very important. So it was the double whammy. It was a tank with no front weak spots that forced people to shoot gold at it. I say forced, but you understand what I mean. If you wanted to pen it, then you probably had to press 2. Or at least be sure of penning it. And on the other hand, while you drove it, it forced you to shoot. If you wanted to pen, and all the other caveats I just said, gold. So that was the gist of his argument, not necessarily that it was completely overpowered. But I will say, straight on, it's a pretty impressive Tier 8 tank. Now, it will come up for sale again. The sale is over. The rental period was only last weekend. Right now, we've got front lines going on. But I am going to review it in case it comes back and you might decide that you'd like to pick this thing up. Chrysler case. So we'll do the standard deal. Overview tech tree considerations. 3D model. Look at the comparison amongst its peers. Look at my stats in 20 battles. That's all I could do is that was the totality of my rental time, and I do not own this tank. My setup that I used and examples of gameplay when we get to the end. So let's start with the overview. So here it is straight on. Pretty well angled front armor, just very thick and decent angle. It's very hard to penetrate. We'll go over the numbers a little bit later. No weak spots on the front. In fact, these two machine gun things are not weak spots. The side is a big billboard, much like most of the American tanks. In World of Tanks, that's pretty big weakness. Big flat sides are a weakness. The German tanks have this same weakness. The Soviet tanks, a couple of them sort of have it, but really most of them, the ones that most people play, have angled sides, which is going to help based on the way that this game is played and the mechanics of shooting the gun. But back to the Chrysler K, pretty big tank, actually. Roughly the size of a T-34. Let's see if I can click on Tiger II. Lerva, we get over to the Russian tanks, they're much smaller, which has always been interesting to me. Much lower profile, it's going to make them more difficult to hit. You get to the side, though, of the Chrysler K, and you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble pinning. The turret is very rounded, so you will get some crazy bounces off of that. That is helpful. And then it's got the little weak spot on the top with the hatch. We'll have to look at that in tanks.gg. I'm not 100% certain that is a weak spot, but it's not very easy to hit, and I, I'm pretty sure it is. I like these little machine guns back here on these swivels. Kind of interesting. It looks like a space tank like that. Now, the biggest thing I think you'll realize, obviously, as you look at it, is it is rear-mounted on the turret. And while it has some pretty good side armor, it makes it quite a side scraper. When you've got a rear-mounted turret and you side scrape, the gun comes out from behind the cover. Say the cover's right here and you're side scraping out to the right. The gun's going to come out much sooner than if it's front-mounted or center-mounted. And that allows you to expose much less of the tank. It is quite the beast side scraping and straight on to anybody. We'll talk about some maneuverability and the capability of it to stay in front of you in a little bit. But it is quite high, to be quite honest, because its mobility is a bit silly for the tank that it is. If you look at the vehicle details, it's a project of the Chrysler Corporation. Developed in summer of 46. Had some design solutions that were not typical of U.S. tank building. Chrysler cables have its transmission and engine located in the front and the armament, I'm assuming it's going to say in the back, 
in the rear of the hole. All crew members would have sat in the turret, which was interesting, spinning around together, I suppose. <laughs> it is thought that this is the project first project for a rear-mounted turret. It was not supported by the Army. So this is a fantasy project napkin tank kind of tank. All right, let's move on to the tech tree. The only thing to really pay attention on the tech tree, obviously, is number one, it's not in the tech tree for gold, so you can't pick it up for gold, not yet or not right now anyway. And it does have four crew members. And it's the standard loadout of commander, gunner, driver, loader, which is very non-standard for the American tanks. You've got all kinds of things going on here. Won't go through it all, but most of these have five or six crew members in them. So it will be a trainer for the American heavies, but you always have that extra guy languishing while you're playing the, the Chrysler K. And you might want to be a little bit careful with the way you spec your guys. You probably don't want to spec them for the Chrysler K and then turn them into one of these other tanks. You probably want to take them out of one of these other tanks, throw them in the Chrysler K for your, for your good crew training and whatnot, and leave the specs correct for the different various tanks that you have right there. And what I'm talking about is sometimes the radio operator isn't the commander, sometimes it's somebody else. I'm not going to go through all the details there, but suffice it to say that the Chrysler K will train your guys because it's got the basic four requirements, but there's always going to be a guy or two left out of the party when they're driving around in the Chrysler K. That is it for the tech tree because it has all the modules unlocked as it is a premium. All right, looking at the collision model, I'm going to start with this angle. I just want you to soak that angle in for just a minute. That is a pretty standard, other than the turret not really pointing at us, a pretty standard side scrape angle right there. That's amazing. You've got auto bounce on the side. You've got very low chance of pen on the front. Now, that's against its own gun. So, obviously, 237 and 243 are not that thick. And if you press 2, a lot of tier 8s and, and 9s and what nines with some of their standard pen depending on how good their pen is can go through it but still that is an incredibly strong profile right there and then you add in the turret that's very thick as well and a lot of tanks are just going to plain old have trouble pinning this guy even straight on look at this if you look down that upper plate holy cow if you look up you can get to a situation where you're slightly taller than that is and it's really got some pretty strong armor straight on 248 the lower plate is a weaker spot but you're going to struggle a bit. Say you're facing it with one of the IS-6, one, the 175s with the low pin, you're going to have a really hard time pinning that low lower plate without going into gold. But pretty amazing right there. You start side scraping with this guy, and it is extremely strong. And that will be borne out by a couple of my replays as I show you the armor profile of it. Obviously, once you get to the side, then very thin, you can start just punching through it. Rounded turrets are, are interesting. This one is pretty big. and it, So because it's big and kind of arches high, unlike the Soviet, which are much lower profile, you will get a bit of a flat plate kind of look right here. But once you start fading off to the right or left, you can really get into some crazy auto bounce angles. So while you're aiming at this thing from long range and it happens to get up into the turret, you're going to find yourself bouncing quite a bit. Now let's look at this. It looks like the hatch really isn't that weak. So I mentioned that earlier. It just... It's got almost as much armor as the rest of the thing. So there you go, folks. The no weak spot front. See those machine gun ports? Why would they be weak spots? I don't know. <laughs> They're not. Interesting, right? There you go. 3D models. Move on. Take a look at the tail of the tape right here. What I've done on this one is I have set it up with all premiums because you'll probably be making a decision with the Chrysler K when it comes back on sale whether you want to buy this thing or not as a premium. So we'll look how it stacks up against some premiums. There's at least one pref in there, the M M6A2E1. But we're going to look at that because it is one of those heavily armored tanks, kind of a similar play style, really, to the Chrysler K. And then a bunch of other premiums that you might be deciding whether to buy or not as you're trying to decide this. So average damage is at 320. It's on the low side. It's not as bad as the T2065. The T2065 is a bit of an outlier. It's a much faster firing, lower alpha heavy. The rest of these things are have hip are more standard on the alpha to shooting or alpha to firing rate, but the Chrysler K is sort of in between. That's what's interesting about this tank because the rate of fire is at 6.2 below the T2065, but if you look at that, it's better than all the rest of them and considerably better than a good number of them. For example, the 252U at 4.17. Now this is important because when, you get, when you're fighting each other and you get down to one shot range, let's call it 300, Puts the T2065 maybe out of the equation because he's only dropping 240 alpha. But somewhere around 300 or less, both of you sitting there, 
it's he who reloads first that it's going to matter, right? So you're going to get an advantage in the Chrysler K. And I found this quite a bit, that it just simply was out reloading people and was able to put that finishing shot into them before they could get to it. So there you go, reload time at 9.68. Again, the T26 is an outlier, but the rest of them it beats by a considerable amount. Gun Traverse is good enough to get the job done, but consider that it's that its whole traverse is really nice, and we'll get to that in just a minute. The combination of the two allows it to deal with things trying to get around it. In fact, I outdueled a couple of E25s on one game, just simply because the thing was maneuverable enough to do so. And I'm talk not talking top speed, but again, we'll get to that. Gun depression is minus six. That's horrendously bad. A rear-mounted turret, that's what you get with that kind of tank. It did not limit it too much as long as you don't put it into the position where it does. That means you want to fight on more relatively flat space. It's an amazing side scraper, so you're probably trying to go to heavy brawl areas. It also means when you're topping over ridges, it's going to be a while before you get your gun on somebody and you're going to expose the underside of your lower hull. Something to think about when you're chasing people down. Aiming time is amazing at 1.82. This thing will snap all day, all day long. Very good gun handling. 0.35 is one of the lowest, if not the lowest. Nope, it's not quite as good as T-34. That's pretty funny, isn't it? The T-34 of, the, of this crowd is the <laughs> known for a derpy gun. 0.35 isn't bad. Go ahead and run things to bring that down. Vents, brother in arms, all that good stuff. And it will become very comfortable. 1,983 on the average damage per minute is near the high side. So it will spit rounds down range and it will give you a pretty good DPM. But again, you're dealing with, and I guess I failed to mention it, a 198 average pen, which is terrible for its standard round. In fact, it's down at pref tank levels. And you only get about 260, I want to say, with gold, which is still one of the lower gold pens at tier 8. That is where this tank will struggle. But the good news is it aims fast and has a pretty decent accuracy, so you can pick out weak spots and whatnot. 1,500 on the hit points is enough to keep it surviving. Along with the armor, it will outlast a lot of other heavy tanks simply because it's either bouncing or has the hit points to do it. The whole armor, this is interesting. You know, I've been going on and on about the, the armor, but really for this tank, it's the layout that's doing it. If you look at it, it's one of the lower armors, actually. You're looking at the M6A2 at 191, and you've got 180 on the Marbrecker, 190 on the AMX M4, 170 on the PR, yada, yada. Then you look at a tank like the 252, which arguably has a better capability to bounce, and it's only at 130. Well, this is all about the angles. It just... Chrysler K has a better armor layout than most of them and is able to put its 152 to more use. And the 252 is able to put its 130 to even more use based on the way it is angled. Turret is up at 254, which is very useful and rounded, so that also helps with the bounces there. So while the numbers aren't at the top, that's not all about the numbers. There's a lot of angling going on there. All right, the mobility I talked about just a moment ago, so let's look at this. We have 1,200 engine power. It weighs, what, 60 tons, or up to 63. Low limit 63. But the specific power is 20, but the top speed's 35. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I think it goes faster in 35. We'll have to look at that in, in the replays. I don't know if it's governed at 35 or 35 is its top flat speed and it goes faster down. It feels like a faster tank, but I'll tell you why. Mostly it's the specific power and the 1200 horsepower, which is, allows it to get off the line and get up and going to its 35 kilometers an hour much faster than the rest of the tanks. So the 20 specific power and that big horsepower engine, it will get up and go while it's not going to scream at the top end. It is very quick to move around in your local area. And that is extremely useful for a tank that has to keep its front armor to people. Then you add in the traverse speed of the hull. Remember I mentioned that earlier, of 33.38. I didn't realize the Polish tank spun around so quickly, but it is definitely more than a lot of these tanks. It has a great capability with the horsepower, specific power, and its good traverse speed to really keep its front end to, pe to people and avoid being circled. So it does help with all that. Concealment, it doesn't have much. More than I thought, to be quite honest. Six is quite a bit for how big the tank is. And view range at 380, which is useful. Not terrible. Hey, look at the poor 252U down at 350. I did not realize. <laughs> so bad. I3 at 365. But 380 is pretty reasonable for a heavy at tier 8. So putting this all together is an interesting tank 
And if you remember the controversy, it was about the fact that it has no weak spots on the front and still pretty good armor on the front, making people want to shoot twos at it, right? Press two and shoot premium. And its gun is relatively bad, so you're going to be incentivized, let's put it. I, I've used the word force, but let's use incentivized to fire gold. And that was what the hubbub was about. Well, guess what? All that still exists. It's maybe not as big a deal as we thought it was then. Or maybe it is and we're just used to it. There's a lot of different things going on there and stuff to unpack. But Tail of the ty Tape shows a pretty good tank with a relatively weak gun and an interesting playstyle. I will say one thing about it. It is a different kind of tank and a different kind of playstyle. And there's several tanks with that playstyle, notably things like the Mouse and the Mousian. But there are a few others at lower tiers like the Chrysler K who, who have that playstyle. Kind of interesting. The ISM is another one that has a very similar playstyle to the Chrysler K. Let's move on to my stats. Here are my stats. I played 20 battles, 70% win rate, 1,115 average XP, and I did 1,830 average damage to vehicles. So I overperformed win rate quite a bit right there. That's more like a 55-60% average damage. However, however, there's some other interesting things to think about because the armor use efficiency is at 0.99, and that's pretty high. That means it's got usable armor, reliable armor in a lot of cases as opposed to situational armor. What that does then is keeps you in the game. 45% battle survived is high, so since I was alive longer in games and was able to be more of a factor, even if I wasn't pumping out tons and tons of damage, I was still there and helping the team win that translates to a higher win rate. Probably not 70% after 100 battles, but could be up to 60%, and these were all solo as well. 78.57 hits. I talked about the gun handling pretty being pretty darn good for a heavy tank, and that's borne out by a good hit rate right there. 1.47 on the, on the damage, and destruction's high at 2.73. That's talking again to the fact that I was in the battle a lot longer. I had battles where... I'd do 15, 1600 damage, but have four or five kills. Just because my armor and the tank and the hit points kept me in the battle long enough, I was cleaning up the near deads at the end. I was there at the end to help ensure the win, even if I wasn't dropping three, four, five thousand every game. That's very interesting. That's also borne out by a high experience per game of 1,115. 1,242 damage received is really pretty high, which means I was soaking up damage, but I was surviving even having done so. That's again back to the point of armor use at 0.99, which is pretty darn amazing. for a, Even for a tier 8 heavy, that's pretty crazy. Because of all the 2 and all the 9s and 10s you see and everything else. Not as bad as it used to be with 357, but still it's, it's out there. 461 assistance, decent. Spotted, relatively low. And then vehicles destroyed 1.5. I did have a maximum damage of only 4,126 and 6 destroyed, but I did in those 20 battles... I played 15 on stream. You can find those on my stream recording. I played another five to finish up the 20 later that night. And I want to say I had at least three, maybe four ace tankers in there. Three or four ace tankers in only 20 battles. A lot of that was because there were so many people and really bad players, new players essentially playing it, that the requirements were relatively low. I want to say an ace was somewhere around 12,000 or 1,250, maybe 1,300. So that was kind of low. Still, though, there you go. Humble brag. Those are my stats. That is it. Let's move on. My setup. Before we get to my setup, I just wanted to mention this. I'm in the Hall of Fame here to show you where I was relatively. I only had 20 battles. This requires 30 to be on the board. But down here are, are my numbers at 5,532 WTR, which was good enough, just barely, 32 to make me 10th, 11th. Would have made me 11th. Now I'd need to play another 10 battles and maintain that or get better. Probably, hopefully maintain it before I got on the board. But it, it would have been the top 20, I'd imagine, by the time I was done with it. One of the other reasons I'm showing you this is, look at this, 6,069. 63. These are all guys who played during this weekend, probably, with all the rentals in there. And drop in some crazy damage, 2,549. I mean, the tank really, look at these win rates. The tank just really performed well over the weekend for some players. Pretty amazing. In fact, what is the worst win rate on this board? It looks like it's a 56.99, so 57% is the worst, and most of them are in the 60s. There's a 75% win rate right there. Holy cow. All right, on to my setup. 
for the setup, you're gonna have to use your imagination just a little bit. I had about a three skill crew, maybe it was a two skill crew, actually I believe it was a two skill, and it went to its third skill while I was playing it. So it was a good crew, but not amazing. They were running Brothers in Arms. As far as this goes, I had a vert stab on it, I had the improved vents, and I had the gun rammer, which I think is pretty well the standard heavy tank. I don't think many people would argue with that. I was carrying 15 APCR, so I did spam the gold to get those stats. Just something you're going to have to do with this gun. Still, though, running reserves in a premium account, I made a lot of money off this thing, even with that. I didn't simply press to every game, but when I needed it, I, I used it liberally as required. Used large kits across the board, and I believe I, I did use a fire extinguisher. I did not use food, and I did mess around with directives. I've said this over and over again. I've got 34 aim tunings. I've got 28 stabilizer greasings, three vent purges. Use the stuff you've built up through all the different missions and things. There's no reason to let it sit in your garage, and it's just a little boost while you go along. So that was basically my setup with this tank right there. Let's move on to some examples of gameplay. Our first example, we're going to have a pretty good scrap here on El Haluf. You can see that I am top tier in a two tier battle. Headed up to the northwest, and we're going to get into the brawling zone. As I watched this one develop, this actually happened on stream. I was talking to everybody on stream saying, you know, this is not looking good. There's only three or four of us up here. The rest of them are camping along the ridge. There's three artillery, so we're going to have to be very careful. 1357 just rages in, and then the... I don't know what the object is thinking. He side scrapes there, bounces off of me. They actually hit pretty hard. There's a good example of the gun handling being really nice. I just sort of let it aim in a little bit and shot before he was able to back up. And there you go. He gets hammered by artillery. If I'd have aimed a little better, better into the top plate, I think it would have actually gone through that because that was the top deck he was showing there. And it is very uh, lightly armored. I think I might have overmatched it. Just think about... Uh, shoot, yeah, I do shoot right in there, but I only get a crit damage. So I'm pretty happy. I'll, I'll leave the... Not leave him, but we'll deal with the T-29 being on my right. I have better armor to come out echelon to the left. And then I was mentioning on the stream that this is not looking good because... See where the Eagle 7 is right there? There's nobody up on that ramp keeping them honest. So eventually they're going to think about coming around. That 252, I believe it's the one I deal with later on. We'll see what happens with him. But I'm figuring any moment there's going to be a medium or two or no, who knows what showing up behind me. So that's about the time that I turn around. The timing is about right as I was thinking about it. And guess what I'm going to find? Yep, there he is. There's an IS right there. We'll pop one to him. He bounces. I get two bounces, actually, the Eagle. And then we get into a really good scrap right here. Now I am going to deal a little bit with the gun depression. See how I can't quite get it down? Kind of a bad shot right there. They're coming around and popping the Tiger C captured. Now I'm working the gun depression there. He takes a shot. I'm just going to come in and put one into the IS who's not looking at me. The 416 dies. He did a nice job trying to go around. I take a hit and then I'm going to take another. No, I don't actually take another hit. I get a crit on my track. And then we'll just kind of come in here. I'm trying to keep my front armor. This is what I was talking about. See how nicely this thing turns around? And again, I'm fighting the depression, and then the arty starts having its vote. So I want to tuck up against the rock. Eagle 7 misses. I'm going to actually drive up on this rock a little bit to get the angle I want so he can't quite get around me. That time he does get to my side, and that is a shot that's going to go through nearly every time. Look at that, sh that artillery shot that went right through my turret. Now I'm trying to find that weak spot, and I go into his hatch. Spin around. See how nicely this thing spins around? Come in here and I'm going to aim for a shot, see if I can put one into this turret. There we go. Notice I am liberally using number two. And here comes the other Chrysler K. Now he's going to come in. I have to back out So I'm dealing with the artillery. Put one into his front sprocket. He does a bad job of angling by giving me too much. Light him on fire and then finished off by my buddy. And here comes the D5-2. Here comes the artillery. Put one into him, but I'm not sure. I guess I bounced off him. The artillery just really wants to shoot me. You get tracked again. He backs off, and you can see he's trying to get around, and I don't know why he doesn't shoot me right here. Must have had maybe a gunner dead, or he just a longer reload than I thought. I'm trying to track him. A little bit hasty on the shot. If I'd have been more careful, I might have been able to go for a weak spot. I get a little help right there. We get him tracked. I back up. Look how much I have to back up to get down to his lower plate. Again, I go for a track, and I get already again. Thankfully, he did not 
crack me, and now we're face-hugging, and he's going to have a lot of trouble pinning me unless he's shooting gold, which so far he has not. There are weak spots on those turrets there. Not turrets, but hatches. They're just very flat. However, the good news is I'm looked down on them, so I have a nice nice little angle right there, and we can finish this dude off again with the artillery coming in. Just really wanting to shoot me right there. And another one. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and uh, speed this up a little bit. And I'm not sure if I get another shot, to be honest. Come in here. No, my E25 dies before I can get to it. I'm pretty sure I don't get another shot. Just a good example right there. 3,854. Of the scrapping capability of this thing. Just that kind of ability to keep the front end to it. But it did show a good example of fighting with the elevation just a little bit in there as well. Liberal use of number two. I mean, I fired 15 gold rounds in there to make all of that happen. But it really demonstrated pretty well, I thought, a lot of the things I talked about, about the strengths and the weaknesses of the tank. Let's move on to the second example. For a second example, we're in Ghost Town, spawned into the south. And again, well... I'm top tier by virtue of the fact that there's only one tier in the battle. It's a tier 8 battle. And the thing about Ghost Town is when you're in the city, you do have to be careful because you can be shot from multiple directions. I see these two defenders crossing here, and I'm thinking this is going to be trouble if they get over there and we can't kill these guys out. So I'll immediately put a shot and decide this guy. And what I'm going to show you on this one is just the staying power of this tank, even when it's low hit points. Just its armor layout, its ability to maneuver in its local area. Again, not that it is super fast in a straight line, but just that it can get around as required. I take a snap, and I'm feeling like I really can't sit there because I'm going to start getting sn sniped in the side, but I'll just back up, cover up with the building here, see if I can't get a shot into this guy. There's another one there. There we go. So we sneak one into him, and I've got to back out. The LTTB is getting us some lights, but now those two clowns are behind that cover right there. And we've got a 75 FL going in. He's trouble. Just, that's just a prayer shot. I'm hoping to get one in on him, and then the, the defenders start looking at me. So I'll back up, try not to overangle too much, but I do need to cut back over to the building here. And now I've got trouble, right? I've got two defenders on my side, guys to my left, and a scout raging around in there. I keep checking six because I'm afraid those guys are going to push us and come around. There goes the scout. Try to aim out in front of them and get a shot. Good shell velocity on this tank, so it doesn't require a whole lot of lead fire, which is nice. It can be really painful trying to aim at these dudes. And I just screw up right there. I did not get my aim up ahead of him soon enough, and I'm firing gold at him as well. So I switch finally to AP. Or no, I don't. I stay at the gold like a Muppet. Hoping he's coming around. He doesn't do that. There he goes. And again, that nice shell velocity. I'm able to get that right in there. Now I've got trouble behind me. These guys are pushing in behind this is where I thought I'd die right there or lose a whole bunch of hit points, but I'm able to make that happen without losing hit points. The M449 just really isn't paying much attention. I'm trying to get into his side armor and I get a chunk out of him right there. He's got a similar problem to this tank in that his armor piercing rounds or his, or his penetration is not great. I'm trying to go for his track. And I'm just going to go buy him here. This is looking bad. I, I need to change this fight. There we go. Come around behind him. I take a hit from the artillery. Artillery paid a lot of attention to me. I back up too much and let that other Chrysler K get a shot on me. That's too bad right there. Now these guys rush by us. Actually, it was a pretty good move on their part going by us as I moved in on them. Really nice little scrap right here. I get a bad... Oh, I'm sorry. That was not the bounce. Now I'm worried because I'm going to start taking hits. Yeah, there it is. So I pushed too far up and the defender got a chunk of me. Not really what I wanted right there. Then the artillery takes another chunk out of me. Got rid of the IS-6. Progetto's out in the open. So we'll take a look for him. Maybe we can... There we go. So he dies. And now I want to come back around this corner and try to get away from that artillery, which has a relatively fast reload. And that cleared out the guys that were kind of behind us, sandwiching us. We still have the two defenders sitting out there. The artillery is close to having an angle on me right there. And there's guys up in the north of the town, so we just really have kind of a lot of things going on here. That shot, probably going to bounce all day. I get to the left side of the pike nose. Can't see them. 
really hoping the prototype will do something. Chrysler K goes down to the 15551. I'm at 1900 damage, 1000 assist. Strangely, I've not managed to bounce anything. And there goes the 65T. He pushes in. But I'm thinking, alright, this is going to give me some lights. I'm concerned, though, quite a bit that the two Chrysler Ks and the 112 are going to show up behind me at any moment. That's why I keep checking six. I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to get sandwiched here real soon. The Scorpion, at least, is hanging out up there. Now we got lights from the 65T, and let's see if we can start putting these guys down. I switch my target to the near dead. So hopefully I can take him down, but I don't. They miss. Good. And he's doing a good job hiding behind his buddy right there. I'm going to try to get down to the lower plate of that dude. There we go. Finally get one in on him. And the bad news now is I'm down to 198 pen because I'm out of low rounds. So I'm going to bounce uselessly. Probably going to have a hard time even penning down into the lower plate of this guy. There's a bounce. Coming back from them. Going after the guy in back, but hit the one in front. And I was really hoping that this prototype would pull his head out. And boom, a Chrysler K. There he is. He finally shows up. I went to HE. I don't even know if he got any damage. Nope, didn't get any damage out of it. Switched to AP, and now I've got to deal with this guy. I figured I'd die right here. I was very surprised the 252s did not take me down. I'm at 223 hit points. This guy goes across here sideways. I get an unlucky bounce. I get a lucky bounce from my own T28 prototype. Somehow does not kill me. But I'm still in this thing, right? 223 hit points. Can't do anything about those two back there. My buddies are going to have to help. And then this guy sort of just loses his mind. Comes out sideways, bounces. And then he's running. And I know he's got his back to me. So I'm thinking, alright, if I can get around here without getting shot in the side, I might be able to do something like that right there. Again, I'm thinking about the 155, 51. So I don't want to back right down there. So I'll stay here for just a second. There's some help coming up. I'm, I'm just checking every direction. I, I can't figure out what exactly this guy's doing or what's happening. The good news is he's terrible. He comes around that way. <laughs> here I am. I'm hoping right now I don't get finished by Artie. I'm going to tuck back around the left. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me, Artie. There we go. Oh, he did shoot me, but he didn't quite get me. He just stunned me. We'll fix it, and we'll shoot into that guy, track him. Oh, jeez. See, it's just getting really hairy. Thousand bounced right now. Down he goes. Let's see if I can get into the side of him. We'll just fire him. There we go. And again, tucking up against the building. Trying to avoid the artillery shooting me, and we've got an advantage. Just an interesting little series right there. And it did show that the maneuverability of this tank within its little area, the ability to get up to speed, even though its straight line speed isn't amazing, the ability to get up to speed and get things going pretty much immediately allows it to do those little maneuvers in small spaces pretty quick, more than you might expect for a tank that looks ungainly and has a rear turret. It's actually pretty darn good as far as that goes. So we're going to speed this thing up. Come around this way. We're looking for shots in the Chrysler K. Worried about the 112. Where is that guy? Come this way. I think he died. this guy dies before I get a shot, I think. Nope, I actually do that. I get the shot. There we go. So we finish him. The 8.8 .8 is up top. Let's speed this up. I was hoping to get a shot on him here. I actually do, and I do not kill him, so I don't want to duel with that guy. One shot to him. Let's go over here, and we'll try to find this 112. Make him go away. He goes away. Very good. And again, speeding up. And I will switch over here towards the 8.8. .8. I talked about this for a while because I didn't want to just come driving around the corner, this next corner, and go straight out the 8.8. .8. There's artillery as well. So very likely I'm not going to survive. So I'll take a couple peeks. Nobody's showing. Waiting for my guys to move around. There goes the Carnarvon AX. He's moving around towards the north. I'm hoping he can get up there, figure out where the artillery is. And there's people being mad and talking in chat. I go all the way back here. Just take a shot and don't get spotted. So that's interesting. He does not appear to be on that side, which is where he was. So he's probably flexed. Maybe back to the north. And it's possible he's dealing with the Carnarvon, so I'm going to go back over here, around this way. Took a bit of a chance there, getting spotted, and all of a sudden, there he is. He gets shown. And we'll just go ahead and zoom this in. The Oho has finally done something, and what the Oho did was nothing. He actually sat there AFK, I believe, and spotted the 8.8 .8 because the 8.8 .8 
got close or something. I, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what happened right there. All I know is we found this guy. Five kills, 3,675. Let's we'll speed this up because I believe I get the kill on this guy. There he is. He's doing a runner. And boom, down he goes. <laughs> that was interesting because I fired. I thought I'd hit first, but I hit second, right? 34 damage, and I got the actual kill. So I sniped a kill off someone there. Six kills. Top gun, 3,709, 1,000 bounced, and 1,046 assist. Just a good example of even at low hit points, this thing can just stick around, which is what I was discussing earlier on the stats, that while some of my games weren't very high in damage, it's just the fact that you're there affecting the battle, making the right decisions, that, that this thing will do very nicely. Right, let's move on to the third and final example. Final example, we're going to give you a little bit of face punching and side scraping action. Initially, I was going to come around, but there's just too many of them pouring down, and I don't trust my teammates. The 34 comes up, and he just goes, and then he slams on the brakes and thinks better of it. I think that's a wise move on his part, so I'm going to sit here and side scrape. I'm hoping he'll keep it. There we go. Keep moving, dude. I don't know why he didn't have his gun pointed at the guy. I don't know what this stirb is doing either, but of all the positions he could take, that's one of them. The 65T is going to struggle coming out sideways with that pike nose. He's going to flat plate that left side of his pike, and I'm going to just punch through that all day long. And we got this guy is peeking and poking. I'm not really sure what his plan is, but that's fine if he wants to show me that T43 turret right there and let me punch holes in it. Then I'll take it all day. Again, he comes up. Not really sure why he's doing that. Oh, because he's going to fire some HE or whatever that was. <laughs> I guess he bounced. I guess that was a regular F year round. <laughs> thought it was HE the way it bounced. So the 5100 is up there. We do have some guys up top. And now I'm thinking, all right, it's time to push in on these dudes. I see the 43. And then I think better of it. And I eat a shot. I really flat plated the lower plate and gave that 65T a nice APCR shot into my lower hole. And I, I'm going to do it again, unfortunately. We do get a chunk of the 5100. He's probably out of shots based on his rocking back and forth and whatnot. I'm thinking I might hit him. Let's back up. Try to get him tracked here. We do. But he's got a repair kit. And then the 65T comes. I spin. He misses. See how fast that thing spins? It just really is good maneuverability. Close in like that. The King Tiger C is being kept honest by my buddies behind me, so we can't really come all the way around that tank. So right now I'm basically fighting the 65T, and I may have shots of opportunity on the Tiger. Get right into that guy's left side of the pike nose. Again, struggling coming out sideways against me right there. The King Tiger fires, and I know he's probably on a reload, so I just take that opportunity. There's that reload speed that this tank has. It gets inside most people's reload circle and is able to get those nice shots again punch right through their low roll at 369 a lot of low rolls actually in fact there's only one high roll that i see on my list and that's 332. so now i'm going to work the side scrape a little bit more and we're winning pretty handily i have some decent hit points i don't want to just drive around the corner and get wrecked though but i'm slowly but surely moving up on these guys there we go and I'll just back around the corner on this one. I'm, I just don't even want to let him have a good shot. Look at that angle. So I give him that angle. He's on a reload. Look how fast I accelerate. I move right forward. No problem. Sneak one in on King Tiger C. Rages in there. Another bounce because of the angle. And down goes the poor AMX <laughs> 65T. Who had some pretty good luck against me early. But 3,964, 1,700 bounce. That's like carrying an extra hole around with you. At 1,500 hit points, I was able to have a, another tank and a half. If you consider the... 600 that I've taken in there and I don't think I get this kill he dives to somebody else yeah there we go and I won't get a shot on the artillery I don't believe let's find out I'm pretty sure I don't oh, maybe I do well there you go oh that's right I forgot about that I did forget I loaded HE because you know you load HE against thin skin tanks right it always 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 lets me down 162 <laughs> even though I hit him right in the side 
4,126 damage, 1,700 bounce, no kills, interestingly, down there, but just anchoring that lower fight, and I think a good example of the side scrape capability, and for me, just the maneuverability in the local area that this kind of big ungainly tank has, it really does work pretty well for that. Probably better than the ISM, just based on its get-up-and-go speed. Let's wrap this thing up. Well, that's it for my review of the Chrysler K Tier 8 American Heavy Premium Tank. This is a good premium tank. Definitely worth picking up if you're in the market for an American Premium Tank. But I would say realize it's a kind of unique play style. So it is not going to transfer to a lot of the heavies out there. I mean, side scraping, yes. Being a brawler, being a heavy. But with the rear mounted turret and some of the unique capabilities of this tank and ways you have to play it, do be a little bit careful. If that is your play style or you enjoy that kind of different tank this may be right up your alley because it is quite good i would not call it overpowered but it is definitely at the top edge of good i think a lot of people disagree with me especially after the rental weekend there's probably a lot of players saying this thing is so awful it's terrible it can't do anything well actually it's pretty dang good and for the way the game is played especially in the heavy brawling zones it's it's tailor-made for a lot of that kind of gameplay now it's not a medium it's not a light so it's not going to do everything but as far as being a, a brawling, tanking heavy, this is this is pretty well near the top of its class. Really enjoyed playing this tank, actually. I didn't think I would, and I had no intention, really, of either playing it or buying it. But the rental was there, so I played it 20 times, and I came away with a really good, a really good feeling about the tank. I quite enjoy it. And perhaps a lot of it is the uniqueness after having played so long in this game. When a decent tank that is also unique shows up, I do enjoy playing trying to figure it out and playing that particular tank well, that's it for me guys thanks for tuning in i appreciate your support of the channel as always and we will see you